Well, hello everybody. It's day four. Today I'm going to show you guys how to actually install the mods. Yesterday I told you guys, uh, or showed you guys how to uh, install Mod Loader, Mod Loader, MP, and Forge, which are all installed in your Minecraft jar. Now I'm going to show you guys how to actually install all the mods. Uh, so here we go. If you take a look at this folder on the right, I downloaded uh, Ray's Minimap, BC IC2 Crossover Client. This is a, a uh, add-on to IC2 which allows um, uh, electrical engines which run off of the EU uh, and cr produce build craft power. They have three different types of engines or three or four different types of engines there. It also has an uh, engine that runs off of oil and produces EU so you can produce some industrial craft energy. And it also has an oil fabricator which um, produces oil via UU matter. It's a cool little add-on to IC2 to kind of help uh, bridge the gap between build craft and industrial craft. They're two different energy types. Of course I've got all the build craft files, build craft additional pipes, so our teleport pipes, and then uh, we got code chicken core and ender chest. These two are uh, for the ender chest mod, which is a a chest you put down that works between the Nether end and the real world in um, uh, Minecraft. And so, uh, really cool kind of chest. Think of it as almost like a TP pipe chest. You you place items in one chest and it is automatically appearing in the other chest. Kind of a little cool thing. Forestry client. Um, you guys all know what that is. It's a great little mod that uh, works with in industrial craft and build craft. I can't even call it a little mod anymore because it's absolutely huge, the amount of work that he's put into this. Uh, industrial craft 2, of course. Inventory tweaks. Logistic pipes. My absolute favorite. Logistic pipes. Oh. Anyways. And then red power and tree capitator. So there we go. So as you can see, this is a client that we uh, worked with yesterday. Open up our mods folder. There's nothing there. So first thing we do to install mods, there's two ways to do it. There's the way where you just click and drag everything, throw it in there, and hope it works. Well, we're not going to do it that way. Or the other way, which I'm going to show you how to do, is do it one at a time. Now, the reason why I do it one at a time is because then when you start up Minecraft, you kind of know what mod is giving you problems, and you can kind of, you know, uh, fix any type of problem you have as you install these mods. So we're going to install these mods one at a time. So let's go ahead and drag and drop all the buildcraft folders over here. So we got buildcraft core, builders, energy, factory, and transport over here. So we got them over here. Let's go ahead and start up Minecraft. All right. Go ahead and log in. Here we go. Mojang screen comes up, and it works. So that's good. Now that we have buildcraft installed, let's go ahead and um, try to get uh, additional pipes. And hey, why not? Why don't we throw logistic pipes over in here too? So through do that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I know there's going to be no conflictions. So we'll go ahead and uh, put that in here. Start it up. Works great. All right, so we now have Billcraft, Logistic Pipes, and Additional Pipes all installed. Next thing that I'm going to install is Industrial Craft. Let's go ahead and throw Industrial Craft in here. Open it up. Let's see what what happens. Industrial Craft is now in here, so we now have Industrial Craft, Billcraft, Additional Pipes, and Logistic Pipes installed. Everything works like a charm. So that's good. Next uh, mod that I'm going to put in here, well, why don't we do Ender Chest? So we'll put Ender Chest in here. And, of course, don't forget to do the Code Chicken Core Client. Uh, you need both of these for, in order for uh, Ender Chest to work. You not only need the Ender Chest mod, but you also need Code Chicken Core uh, as well. So make sure you have both of those when you download if you're going to use Ender Chest. Let's go ahead and start up Minecraft. Go ahead in here. There we go. Mojang screen comes up. It's stalling on us. What's going on, guys? It's stalling. Uh-oh. Are we going to have a problem? We have a problem. As you can see, Minecraft brings up this crash report report for us. Uh, we scroll down here. It's all in Java, but Java is still English, right? So we can still kind of figure out, even if we don't um, uh, understand the Java language at all, uh, we can still kind of figure out, you know, what um, what's going on. So I sc scroll down here to begin error report. It says slot 241 is already occupied. Well, I know I just put Ender Chest in there, so Ender Chest must be using slot 241, which is already occupied. All right. Well, let's go ahead and close this out. Now, what do we do? Well, it's easy. Go back to uh, your .minecraft folder. So we just hit back here real quick. And we go into our config folder, and here's an Ender Chest config file. And we'll open this up. Let me drag this over onto this screen. Block ID equals 241. Now, with Minecraft, it has... 1 through 255 is a valid block ID. Now, I think vanilla Minecraft uses like 1 to like 130-ish, give or take, you know. I, I don't know exactly how many block IDs vanilla Minecraft takes anymore. But as you can see, you have quite a few extra block IDs uh, to use, which mods use. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to 188. And the reason why I'm going to change it to 188 because I already know that it's a uh, it's an open block ID. I've already installed these before, so I've already gone through and, and taken a look. Now, how would you do this on your own if you didn't know 188 would work? Well, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and save this, close it. Now, if you open up IC2, IC2 lists all the block IDs that it currently uses. So you can kind of write these down or, or copy and paste it into a notepad. Um, and then it does this the same for, for every other mod. So we'll go into Buildcraft. As you can see, Buildcraft creates its own folder. Go into Buildcraft, go into their config file. And then Buildcraft takes, uh, what is it, 145 to 168-ish, you know, give or take. It doesn't take all those, but you can kind of write these numbers down um, on a separate thing. And you can kind of see what each different mod is taking and then kind of figure it out. Now, there are programs out there that um, actually auto-assign blocks IDs for you. I won't recommend them for the sole purpose that they do conflict with some mods. It's not all mods, just some mods. And I can't give you a particular list because it changes all the time. But just be careful when you're using those block ID um, programs. They are very useful, especially when you're getting really, really low on block IDs uh, and stuff to kind of try find and sort it out a little bit. But uh, at the same token, I mean, there's uh, a way where you can just kind of go through each of your mods and kind of see, you know, what block IDs are using. So every mod should create a config file. That's not every mod will. Every mod should create a config file for, so that the user can uh, go ahead and edit the block IDs. That doesn't always happen, but for the most part, uh, especially with the larger mods, they all have config files to, to go with. So we changed that, and we're going to go ahead and start back up. Let's go ahead and start it up. See if it works. Log in. Did it work? Did it work? It worked. So Minecraft starts right up. So now you guys know how to change block IDs. Uh, if you ever need to do that, it's the easiest way to do it. All right, now the next mods I'm going to add are Ray's Minimap, Tree Capitator, and Inventory Tweaks. I'll go right into your mods folder. None of these are going to add any blocks to to Minecraft. Of course, Ray's Minimap adds the uh, minimap in the upper right-hand corner that you can add waypoints and stuff so you don't get lost like me. Inventory Tweaks lets you sort your inventory so you can get a little bit more organized. And Tree Capitator lets you just beat trees, knock them down, so good. So anyways, so we got those installed. Let's go ahead and uh, start up Minecraft to make sure that they all install correctly. Log in. Mojang screen comes up. And we're good. Alright, so so far we've got pretty much everything installed. Now all we got less is BC IC2 crossover client, forestry client, and uh, red power. Let's go ahead and throw forestry in here. Start up Minecraft. Now, please, if you're installing these mods, always do one at a time. One at a time. When you start rushing and you throw everything in here, you're going to run into problems. And the reason you are is just because you'll never have a good basis on what's going on, especially if you're new to installing mods. So just do it one at a time. It takes you, you know, five, ten minutes to do it, but then you're done. You never have to do it again until, well, of course, Minecraft updates. So Forestry went ahead and uh, worked just fine. Minecraft came up. So what's our next one? We'll do BC IC2 Crossover Client. Throw that in there. Start up Minecraft. I know this is a little repetitive, but that's okay. Start it up. Let's see how it works. Mojang screen comes up. Everything worked fine. So we now have all these mods installed. The only ones we don't have are the Red Power. Now, I use every single one of Red Power's uh, mods. You don't have to um, by any means, but uh, I do just because I like using everything that's in Red Power. So we go ahead and drag and drop all those in here. Array, Core, Lighting, Logic, Machine, Wiring, and World. And we'll go ahead and start up Minecraft. Let's see if it works. Here it goes. Mojang screen comes up. And it worked. So there you guys go. That is a, uh, pr it's pretty easy, as you can see, to uh, install all these mods. And hopefully this is kind of giving you guys a little bit of a, a tutorial on how to get all these mods installed. And it's the same process no matter what mod you use. You run into a problem, just see what block ID uh, is conflicting with it. Go to that mod, change the block ID to one that you think is open. Uh, restart Minecraft. If it still doesn't work, change it again. Uh, and that's the process you use with installing these mods. Uh, so hopefully this gave you a, a good idea on how to install these mods. I hope you guys are having a uh, great day wherever you are, and uh, we'll see you later.